Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through uh, the process of this painting. Um, this is my second video where I um, talk through uh, my process and see, and you know, kind of self-analyze what I was doing and see if I can improve and uh, let let anyone know that's interested what I was thinking at the time. So this is the. Um, so with this, I wanted to get a composition that was completely different than something I've done before, than anything I've done before, really. It's, I wanted something bigger. It wasn't just a piece just to fill time. I just wanted a, um, a portfolio piece, but that was something different that I haven't done before. And that includes like color and uh, composition and just intent, really, because with this one, I had, um, if you noticed at the start, I had a shift in um, frame, essentially. So the intent was to go from, uh, to have a pan shot at the end. So it have like anim animated parallax layers in there. So um, I would I would have it starting at the bottom and keep the same aspect ratio and then just pan up to the house in the center of the composition at the top. It was, it, it started off as, 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 want, as kind of wanting something that organically as you pan through that all these layers would um, would sort of parallax over each other, but not in a foliage setting, not in something that I'm normally used to, in, in, maybe in something more urban, for lack of a better term, urban. And now um, see what I can do with that. So um, I started off with the color key. I wanted something purple, something like evening setting, so the sun is only hitting that that top top house over there, so the focus is on that. And it was easy then to separate the houses at the bottom of this mountain um, to be in a dark blue, something that only the ambient light of the sky would uh, illuminate. Um, and it also sort of, um, within that then, there are separations of purple houses to blue houses closer to the foreground, and that separates something without needing to separate the value uh, by too much. It already kind of gives it a separation because the color's different. A little bit of value play in there as well, just to reinforce that, but not not too much. So it can look like one big package, but within there, there's different layers and depths. So yeah, the um, content of this piece was uh, came about because well, I didn't really know what to do. So I I have this world I'm building that I've been building for like four maybe even five years on and off, just I, I revisit maybe once or twice a year just with a composition. It's just a story really that um, that I really um, spent a lot of time putting together. So I can I can dip into that, um, that kind of loot and uh, a source, a composition, a story beat, something with um, something that kind of gives description to anything I want to do. So if I'm lacking in content, if I don't have anything to study, it's always good if you have like a world that you're building just so you can kind of dip into there and uh, and and get kind of really quick content from a story that you kind of strongly, that you know really, that you know really well and you, you don't have to worry about what's going on here, what's the story, what's the narrative, from whose perspective am I looking, what kind of emotional beat do I need to hit, what palette should that use, you know, that's something that you can kind of skip and um, you already know it, so it, 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 it makes the painting process a lot quicker. Um, just for clarity, this is um, a boy, it's an orphan boy in a kind of fancy um, steampunk-esque world, and it's um, and he's being comforted by this magical person, thing. Uh, that wasn't defined, so that, that's why the characters here took a little bit longer than they normally would, because um, <laughs> they were the only undefined bit. But essentially there's a... Um, there's a man that lives, uh, there's a scientist on the top of a hill, classic cliche, and um, maybe he can help the boy, and that's what the spirit is saying and kind of pointing towards. Uh, and that's, for, that's you know, complemented with the pan of the, of the, uh, of the camera going up there, and uh, the really strong triangular composition of this, the whole piece really, it, it kind of, there's so many triangles in here, because I wanted it to be kind of edgy, kind of not, Angry, not hostile, but a little bit of um, 
unease and uncertainty because um, I use a lot of blues and purples and stuff. Uh, the triangles, yeah, they're kind of a harsh shape of a, a very kind of uh, kind of a hostile shape, I suppose. But but they are um, strong and and sort of willed, I guess. Uh, so that's reinforced in the composition of the of the two characters there. So with the one pointing his finger in in the ear, pointing at the house, it kind of create, and then with his hand on the other one, it kind of creates this triangle composition, which I reinforced in the in the kind of the little shack that the boys living in, which I then reinforced in the houses and the roofs, and then that whole that whole inverted triangle with the purple coming down, pointing into the um, characters. That's uh, that's reinforced there as well. And also, of course, the the mountain itself is a is a triangle. So there's so many triangles going on in here. It's it's, it's the visual language that's strongly uh, reproduced to create the effect that I kind of wanted to go for. And I think I, I think I succeeded. Um, I was happy enough with the end result. Uh, at the moment, I, at this stage in the painting, I I wasn't happy with the characters and what the values were doing really. I wasn't sure how far away to push the buildings in front of the uh, characters. I wasn't sure if the characters were going to be darker or lighter because uh, uh, as you can see, the glowing hands are kind of the lightest thing in the scene mixed right next to the darkest thing in the scene. And it kind of, I had to play with the color, the values, and just to make sure everything was kind of working it. In the end, it was okay, I think. I, um, I wasn't completely happy with it, but if I if I was completely unhappy, I I would have kept working on it until I had something I was okay with. Again, my brushes are almost all default brushes. Um, I have a few custom brushes in there, but nothing nothing um, exciting used for these. I should really stencil my um, my houses so I can I can I can do those much quicker. The character ended up being some sort of um, some sort of my neighbor Totoro in a top hat with a waistcoat and glowy arms, um, which I was happy with the design. In the end, it kind of gave off the real, it kind of gave off what I was going for. I was going for this surreal. It's not quite a spirit. It's not. It's magical. It's helpful. It kind of pops in and out. It's a it's a friendly kind of character. Uh, the the chops in the arms, the, the triangles in the arms as well, again, reinforcing loads of triangles about the place. Um, even within the silhouette of the shack there, um, anything that's kind of, um, anything that I saw too square, I try to make spiky and, and try to kind of make it into a triangle or into a spike of, of some kind to uh, reinforce that further. I could have spent longer on the render of the uh, of everything in the background, really, I could have spent longer on the house up here that I'm doing. I could have spent longer on the on the village itself and the details of the homes, but I kind of kind of felt that where I left it was was okay for now. It, 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 I struggled between when to find a render point when I'm actually finished with something, because uh, uh, I always like the the scratchy kind of looseness that my initial sketch sketches have and I try to keep that as much as I can while whilst getting more detail in there so it's quite difficult but hopefully I I slightly achieved that.
there comes a point in the painting when everything the border strokes are done <clears throat> and uh, fiddled about with and uh, you, you've I've kind of caught on something that I think is okay and then it's just about the rendering it's just about where can I add detail where where is lacking in detail where needs more focus as well and I think I concentrated on the characters in the shack maybe a little too much but it is one of the one of the focus points I wanted to concentrate on the composition that it started on because that would be that would be lingering on that for the longest part and then the composition that it ends on which by comparison is very um, well as you can see is very empty um, I think the actual frame it only has very uh, very small bits of the houses that are next to it and it is simply just that isolated mountain and, and that house in there so it's a contrast between very simple ending very um, very simple not many features in the, in the last shot and as you pan down um, or pan away from the beginning it, it's a very complex and there's a lot of values playing on it's a very strong um, striking area of the of the image I think <clears throat> I think it, overall I was happy with it. Uh, there's a few values that I would have changed. There's a few other. There's a good few other things I would change. But I, I took it as a learning curve, and, and I'm kind of happy with it. I can reference it whenever I, I mention that world that I created, or that I'm creating. And I think I'll do more from this world because I, I think it was easy to get that content out there. <clears throat> At the end of the video, you'll see the actual pan shot to the um, to the mountain that I was talking about, or. or bar some parallax in that I uh, wasn't smart enough to do <laughs> at the time but yeah I think that's pretty much it thank you everyone for joining I uh, thank you for watching and uh, there's more videos on my channels uh, feel feel free to check them out and um, let me know give me feedback I always read the comments and it's good to hear from you okay bye 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 bye